Um, and it's simple, clever, and uh, you know, I've got tons of boiling water going on there because it's efficient heat capture. And like I said, anything you can do with a rocket stove can further that. Yeah. Um, there's no grate, there's, uh, just, there's, a hot, there's holes in the floor to allow the wood gases to come up okay, through. So, it's, it's so the fire that we did, we did have the combustion in there, and pyrolysis in there, okay. that's the retort, that's the combustion chamber. The, com the, the combustion initiates the pyrolysis and it acts as a pilot. So it's like a convection going round. No, there's nothing going round. It's forced down the outside to yeah, back up through the holes. Yeah. 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 It is very high quality. I'll explain the key as well briefly. Big, big surface area in there. And a negative electrical charge. It's, a electric, uh, it's got a cation exchange capacity. I think that makes it possible to charge, yeah. Which basically, anyway, it sucks in all your nutrients, uh, which are otherwise soluble. And they like that, it holds up great out of They won't be lost in the reef, but they'll remain on the atmosphere. To make it available to plants, you have to encourage biological activity. You can't just put that in your, if you put it in your mature, your manure pile and you mature your manure, then in that time you get biological activity. So, if it rains, soluble nitrates that farmers are putting on their field, one rainfall and it's gone. One tonne of soluble nitrates, 10 tonnes of oil to produce. Some intensive farmers, up to 18 to 25 tonnes per hectare per year. Ooh, phenomenal oil, and that, that burning, that much oil, to create a huge environmental problem because it washes into the groundwater, blue-green algae, you all know the problems, um, soluble potassium, all the soluble, even if you're using manure like I do on an organic system, you leave your manure pile, even if you cover it, you still lose loads of your nutrients and the minute you put the manure down, you lose the nutrients after the first two rainfalls, not a minute, very quick. I live in a sandy, it depends on your soil, depends on the, how well composted the manure is. The secret for locking the nutrients into your manure pile is biochar. I'm going to talk about that from 4 o'clock, but that is one of the keys to what I'm doing. Um, if you compost wood chip, it will release the carbon back into the atmosphere quite quickly. American Amazon Indians, 8,000 years ago, were... We know that they've left behind what they call terra preta, black earth. And, some, and a lot of other cultures were doing this. Some 8,000 years on, the carbon has been permanently captured. Presumably, what we assume, one likely explanation, is they were producing charcoal for their sewage systems. Hence, they got a thriving population because they are very good sanitation. And they were very, very fertile soil. It's of interest now because 8,000 years on, this terra preta, black earth, is very full of nutrients in tropical rainforest conditions. The nutrients have been held in and the carbon is still there. You can do a simple test as well, the carbon does not wash out. That carbon will be in my field in 8,000 years time. One tonne of car charcoal, I don't know the exact figures, but I know the atomic weight changes. It's something like one tonne of charcoal is something like 12 tonnes of atmospheric carbon sequestered. Tell me any, we have to suppress the carbon. We're in a real mess if we don't. We're still chucking it in the sky. I mean, call it raping the earth and burning her blood. It doesn't matter, we'll call it. However you phrase it, we've got to get, undo the mess we're making. This is the only way I've, that, that is effective that I've come across. Um, that's the reason, so, another point. The world's biggest killer, 50% of the world's population, are cooking from wood or charcoal in their living space. It's the world's biggest killer. People think you get a clean burn from charcoal. You're not. You're billowing carbon monoxide into your living space. Now, a huge waste of resource. Um, so, smoke-free wood stoves is what half the world needs right now. And actually, we need as well, because we're going to have to come off petrol and oil. And that means we're going to... And there's not enough wood to go around. Wood stoves, open fires, CHP plants even, the, carbon, the, the combined heat and power electricity generators. They're not good enough, they're not efficient enough. The, the reason rocket stoves don't produce biochar 
I want to produce biochar. I want to produce charcoal to sequester carbon and to make my field more fertile. So what I'm actually doing, the more fertile the, the nutrients are locked into my, I've got a little organic, couple of organic fields, small scale organic horticultural units. The more cooking I do, the more charcoal the biochar I produce. The more biochar I produce, the more fertility is locked into my land. The more fertility is locked into the land, the more food I produce the, on a per acre. The more food I produce per acre, the more I can cook. So, and I didn't grow the potatoes, but everything else we're selling here is, is grown. And the only reason I didn't grow the potatoes is because I had optic shingles over the planting season. It just threw me right back. I've had a blood that growing yet. Um, but that cycle, normal people cook and put carbon in the sky or burn fossil fuels. They grow in fertilizers, putting fossil fuels in the sky. Instead, I'm taking fossil fuels out of the sky when I cook, and I'm taking fossil fuels out of the sky when I grow. And, oh, sorry, carbon. I'm taking the carbon back out, returning it. And so it's a really positive cycle. Suddenly, I'm less of a cancer on the earth. Sticks in end up, the connection to the fan, you light it, it sticks up to the end up, light a fire on top, it smoulders down, releasing wood gas, and then you blow air through holes at the top. Down, goes up the sides, blowing air into the wood gas causes a very efficient smokeless combustion and leaves sticks of charcoal. Great in third world countries. Brought a couple to demonstrate. It's meant to be smokeless, wood's wet. I know something's gone wrong. I'm not and I'm not attempting it right now. Um, um, brilliant idea. Farmers in especially in Haiti where there's before the huge trauma they've been going through as a nation, they deforested. Okay, there's nothing, they typhoid and nothing to cook on, that's their problem now. These cookstones being introduced in Haiti, they're using a fraction of the amount of wood and they've got biochar coming back here. Programme going on in Kenya, the guy who designed those, absolute genius, you know, the whole concept of getting third world farmers to sequester carbon whilst the, the, the Sahara Desert was man-made from growing peanuts. Um, all these deserts were man-made. We haven't got that long, we've got much more forgiving soil here. It doesn't mean we've got that long of doing what we're doing. We have to start selling more fertilizer to go and do it. We've got to build up. But I'm not going to go there now. But Paul Anderson getting farmers and he's in Uganda at the moment um, because of the famines. No point in giving it. I mean, look what happened in Ethiopia in the 70s. Give them food, the people growing food go bust, you make the famine worse. It, it's a difficult one. Give them a way to make their soil fertile and a way to cook the food they can produce then at least it's a step. I mean, you know, 30, 40 years old, it's not done anything. It's worse now than back in the 70s when I remember being a kid at school. And uh, so, yeah, he's doing amazing work. But these aren't going to be used by Westerners. They're too messy. It's not meant to be. Can you turn it off, actually? It's not meant to be. I know what I'll do. I'll chuck a bit of, chuck a bit of paper and a bit of wood chip on. It's got wet wood in. I didn't load that one up. It's got wet wood in. You've got to have dry wood. Have a look, you see it looks like the flame is coming out of the hole. I should I mean I should have double checked and stacked that one myself this morning, but I don't know. Um, they're not gonna work in first world countries. We're creating this carbon problem. Third world farmers are clearly good for us. Uh, they're too messy. Um, people can cope with rocket stoves in this country. They're too um, difficult to light. And you have to quench the charcoal to stop it burning up after, because otherwise there's air in there and the charcoal would all burn up. Mm -hmm. Quench it with water, which is a mess. Cloud of steam. You need, yes, you can have a little fan, but 12 volts, it doesn't need to be 240, but yeah, better to not have a fan. Fan is the key. Looks like a rocket burner. I've copied the rocket burner, it's not a rocket burner. It's much, I've lost a leg, sorry, well I haven't it has. Um, it's much cleverer than a rocket burner. So, for those who don't know, a rocket burner, yeah, <laughs> brilliant, a rocket burner, Efficient combustion, like I said, the two things he wanted was efficient combustion and the ability to actually capture the heat that you produce. Um, you get that with an elbow of pipe and with insulation packed around the outside. Now, I have changed the insulation. So he uses vermiculite, for example, because it won't burn. 
I presume you can all go and do a course on rocket stoves somewhere else. Those are the two keys, and the two reasons for rocket stoves are efficient combustion and smokeless burn, and um, it's the same for efficient combustion, and capture the heat. I have adapted it by sticking a plate on this one we're just using this morning for cooking on. You can have wing nuts, you don't need big spanners. Um, that was like Dick Spanner. <laughs> no, it's Spanner. No, that's not Dick Spanner. It's not like Dick Spanner. Nicked off me at work, I was really upset. This is a little bigger one, actually, yeah. Right. Don't need to be this tight either. Instead of having vermiculated insulation, I decided let's have wood chip with the insulation. But obviously, wood chip burns. But if it's oxygen stuff because it's in the outer chamber, then I'll explain two words. Combustion, burning in the presence of air. Pyrolysis, burning in the absence or in deprived air conditions, no oxygen. Oxygen is a combusting agent, you can't catch on fire. Billows out loads of smoke. That's pyrolysis. Good word for, good word for fire without flame, because it's oxygen stuff. Combustion happens in a combustion chamber. In a rocket stove, that's the fire. Pyrolysis happens in a retort. The retort, in this case, is the outer cylinder. It's a, it's a container that is starved of oxygen. So I have turned the outer cylinder of a rocket stove into a retort. So the wood chip, you have a pilot flame as in a rocket stove. This one's going now. Burning like a rocket stove. And the outer chamber, get this one hot and you'll see. No insistent anywhere. <laughs> this is gone for this guy. Um, that's alright, I was thinking, can you keep that one going a minute, just get it so, it's pyro so the pyrolysis kicks off. Just, um, I'll look to this out for you as well. Should be wearing glass. There's always a little bit of not quite the fire. Biochar. It's a bit fiddly, but it's a damn sight easier than the tea ones. And you can make it easier. You can fit them with organs and things if you want to get complicated, make it easier to fill an empty. Out comes the biochar. Go in the wood chip. I wonder, I'll keep talking. If anybody wants to fill that up for me. Um, lid goes back on, so you can see the principle. These holes are the bottom of the elbow. So there's a one the wood chip is filled anyway. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, fill it right up. I'll chuck it in there. And it's... Wood chips should be dry. This is only sun dried. Careful them for you as well. Those holes in the bottom of the elbow are a key. Because there's only when the wood chip bellows the smoke up, the smoke has to go up through the fire. Um, <laughs> I'll show you something on this when it's going. Is that the only air exit? Yep, it is on that one. No, it's not actually. I'll come to that in a minute. Good question. Say it is for now. So that's the only place. That, Where's the air in there? That is the same hole. So you need a small amount of air for pyrolysis. Oh, it comes in and that's, that. Yep, you actually, it sucks it in. It's, it's forced in there. Enough gets in, just enough. Um, this flame coming off this one that's lit now, as it gets hotter, you get, because of the smoke, the smoke comes through the holes and then it combusts. Pyrolysis in the outer chamber, combustion in the inner chamber, that stuff is not playing up. So you get a much hotter flame than you would with a rocket burner. Can you understand that? So you, get not, you couldn't fire these ovens in this hot water system on a rocket burner. So you're using the wood gas as, a, as yep. an extra uh, yep. fuel? Yep. Yep. The wood gas is giving a double, uh, giving an, a, a doubling the combustion. So the wood gas must be burning up on this one, but you get a much higher flame. You can tell that, you can sometimes take the sticks out. And I won't bother, so it's not going to burn my hand. And you still see a flame, because the wood gas is going through those holes, creating a flame. So you only need, once it's going, you want to try and stick some paper on that, just... What, how long does, can, I, can I ask, um, how long does the wood chips last as a... As in that a, one an hour, in that one an hour and a half. 
Okay. An hour and a half of good intense hot burn. Very efficient. It's enough to get an oven that big hot. Anybody wants to have potatoes carbon negative later? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I might have missed it, but um, the use of the, uh, the charcoal that's left? Biochar. We'll come back to that later. Sequestering carbon and locking nutrients in an unorganic field. It's in the gases, the smoke. It's nitrogen, hydrogen, methane, carbon monoxide, and a few other bits and pieces. Three out of those four are very, very flammable. Carbon monoxide is actually a very flammable gas. You don't need to be poisoning yourself with it. Um, you can burn it. Can you uh, adapt this to just make this a wood gas fire? It is. It's a yeah, you can okay, run it. Right, I'll, right, I'll come yeah. to that in a minute. Okay, yeah, good sorry. question. But remind me in two minutes. Okay. How would you adapt it? You would have to have two ways. Imagine you're on a raven, you have a little spider where you make this bit. I have no idea what you Right, you need a, some kind of riddle or an auger. You can adapt. If anybody wants to know how to adapt CHP plants to run them, to put a retort in them, any, any questions, um, stay on. But that's a that's quite a specialist question. I'd rather run as a card, I'd rather stick to get the point in first, then move on to specialist questions yeah. after. That's quite damn cool. But yeah, that's a good question because I'll, I'll answer yours quickly now. There is on the side, you can unscrew that, you block the holes up. So that this one is actually both holes. Unscrew that, unscrew that pipe in there, pipe in there, it has to be bone dry wood chip. The wood gases are forced along here now. You put that, it's a miniature one of those, you put that onto a car bath, it's a computer fan, that's a little valve so you can turn it on and off.